So we're going to talk about an apartment complex tonight. You know, Steve was talking about passive income, and I don't own anything, and I don't have keys, and I am the guy that signs on the loan. I am the deal sponsor. I am the operating partner in a syndication. So Fairfield Village, we're going to talk about. This was my very first property. And the teaser email that went out to you guys was how a guy with no job, no income, no experience could buy a $1.6 million apartment complex. Well, I did it because of Steve Davis and a team of coaches that I surrounded myself with. So we're going to go through that today. So apartment... Oh, apartment guy. I'm reading my own thing. Fairfield Village case study. So that's a picture of what it looks like. It's a 48-unit property in North Austin. This next slide is stupid. It's my disclaimer. I am not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. Please don't ask me for that kind of advice. What we're going to be talking about tonight is just what's worked for me. Acquisition numbers, down payment, 487.5. Closing costs, 39.5. Rehab, 28.5 is where it really kind of, well, it actually came in closer to 40. Uh, operating capital was 19750 So the operating capital, that's that thing that's there in case you have a hiccup and rent doesn't come in for a little while unexpectedly. Or if you buy and close, let's say, on the 10th of the month, all the rent has been collected and given to the previous owner. Now i got to go three weeks maybe without any income coming in, but I might have a few bills I have to pay. That's what the operating capital is there for. It's to make sure that you can always pay your bills. And then total out-of-pocket was 575 Okay, so this is some of the pictures. So on the left, that was the signage when we first bought. I spent, I think it was about $6,000 for that, and I replaced that sign also. That post and panel, I did one that looked similar to that, but that was a big deal. That, we never had signage up on the street like that. So that was, again, about 6000 bucks. Big, big difference, right? It's all about curb appeal. If people don't stop, they can't rent. You've got to give them a reason to stop. This thing was overrun with prostitutes and homeless people, and I had to make people go, oh, something's new there. What's going on? This is an upgraded unit before. This is not upgraded. This is the before picture of the upgraded. That's what it looked like when we got done. Now, that's just one picture, but that's representative of what we did. So this is a remodeled leasing office. It's not remodeled. That's probably the wrong word to use. But as you see, same pool. There was a pretty good sized deck with a pergola, so what we did is we cut half of it. That was a 10 by 20. We cut it in half and put a 10 by 10 office there instead. You know, so it was an easy fix. So now I got a place to stick a manager. When I first bought it, we did not have an office on site, so there's no way for me to have a manager. It had to be run out of a sister property that the management company also ran up the street. Once I got this built, hired my own manager, I let the property management company go, and I've managed everything myself ever since. That building, shit, it's nine years ago. It was probably about ten dollars to $12,000, somewhere in that area. There's the pool area. I didn't, I'm not always good about before and after pictures, but that's the best I could find for after. You see here, it's just flat. It looks like a Motel 6 or a Red Roof Inn kind of pool. Well, we landscaped it. We cleaned it up. We made it much nicer. Uh, I replastered that pool. I think that cost me about, on that little bitty one, about three or 4000 We installed a lot of uh, fences on people's back patios. So their sliding glass door here opened right out into any and everything. So it made people a little uncomfortable in this D neighborhood. It was a C property, but it was in a D neighborhood. So to me, I thought, well... Let's give them a sense of privacy because some people would tell us that I don't really feel safe. I don't think I want to stay. Thank you for showing me. So I was like, wait, we got a problem. So we did that. That cost me 3,700 bucks. And then that, okay, we fixed the laundry room. I went in the laundry room when I bought it. It was a homeless bathroom. And I'm not kidding you. So how did it go? So we took rents from 569 per month to uh, over 650 and kept the expenses fairly flat. So that's just accretive incremental income that didn't have a lot of increased expenses to support that increase. We cleaned it up, we got rid of the bad element, and we treated people like human beings. And that's what it did. Now, I will own the fact I bought this in 2012, and yes, any one-eyed squirrel could have done this in Austin in 2012. Rents were going crazy, but still, we did this. 
Overall income increased from 325 for the year to 373 for the year. The NOI, uh, I'm sorry, that was the in, uh, income. The NOI went from 162 to 180. We bought it at a nine cap. Again, remember, this is 2012. That does not happen anymore. It's in Austin right now. I have a C property in a D neighborhood, the exact same neighborhood, a 200 unit property. I could sell it right now for about a three and a quarter cap. That's just crazy if you understand what cap rates are. If not, come talk to Steve. Uh, we sold it at a seven cap two years and five months later. We held the investment for two years and five months, averaged 13% uh, 13 annual cash on cash while we held it. Total return was 300% or 124% per year to the investor, not to me as the syndicator, because we get paid you know, some premiums for managing and running the entire project. This is what the investor got. This one investment turned into enough money for me personally, my personal stake, turned into enough money to fund my personal stake in two more deals. So this one investment bought me stakes in three apartment complexes. That's really cool. That's why we do this stuff. <laughs>